everybody, my name is Joe Kern, and I will be presenting to you two lead projects that I'm currently working on with Russell Construction this summer. Um, working on two different perspectives of them. One is in the beginning phase, and one is about complete, so we're going to get a good idea of what's going on. First project I'm working on is for Blackhawk College in Moline, Illinois, uh, the Health Science Center. Uh, construction started April 1st of 2014, and it's going to be complete in June 30th of 2015, so the project just started. It's going underway. We're still in the ground. Um, it's based on LEED version 3. Uh, it's going for 50 credits total, with a total possible 77 points if all the points are gained for each credit. Um, the goal is LEED silver, so the Possible points is a little overkill, but leaves room for room for leeway because lead silver is only 50 points for a minimum. Uh, the project budget is 15 million dollars. It's pretty a uh, pretty high tech facility for the nursing center for the Blackhawk College. Um, project building is about 46,000 square feet, but the whole lead site is almost 400,000 square feet because we're putting in a retention pond and creating a new softball diamond for the college. And this is a rendering of what the building will look like. This is the east end with the parking lot over to the right. And then we have the whole glass curtain wall on the other opposite side facing the road and some wood. So it's going to be a very nice building for the college. Uh, important strategies and credits this project is working on. Um, sustainable sites is the most points out of any of the categories. It's going for 25 total points. It outweighs all the other ones by far. Um, it's utilizing um, the college campus and the connectability with the community around it. And also the four regional priority credits for the area are sustainable sites credits. So it's taking advantage of double dipping almost for extra points. Uh, the next most points is in energy and atmosphere. In EA Credit 1, there's optimizing energy performance. That one credit is worth 12 points on its own, so it's the most out of any single credit for points. And that is going for about 35% energy cost savings, which is pretty significant, especially in this climate range. And another, another perspective is IEQ credits. They're doing 12 credits in one point each, so it's 12 points. So you have 12 credits for the same amount of points you're getting out of the one EA credit one. Just an idea of how the lead weights the different credits and how important they are. Um, this building is also utilizing building information modeling. And for those of you who don't know, um, it's just a computer program that allows all the trades to coordinate uh, everything throughout the building from steel, mechanical equipment, to even outlets in the walls before construction begins. We've been working on this since the beginning and we've already detected some clashes between steel and a mechanical lever and then the, where the underground electric is coming into the building. It was initially coming in 30 feet underground where we didn't need it so we've made some changes and it's going to help the schedule and save some time and saving time saves money later on and it's important because it impacts the schedule because it allows you to make up for it in other ways later on or maybe have some unexpected issues that I'll explain later. Um, decided to include the BIM with this. It's an innovative design technique. It's not necessarily part of LEED, but LEED encourages uh, innovation in design and creativity with how buildings are approached, how you approach design and construction. So I thought BIM is going to be around in the future of construction. It's going to probably be imp implemented with every building, just like LEED is working on. So I felt like it was significant to include with it. And this is a rendering of the BIM model, just the same picture you saw earlier. And then this is one with the building envelope hidden. So you can see all that red is the structural steel. And then the yellow underground is that electrical that we moved. And then the uh, mechanical equipment. And then this is with all the structural still hidden and just mechanical electrical equipment 
So it's kind of cool to see all the guts of the building that you don't normally see when you're inside of it. And you can pretty much see the layout of the building on its own without any structure, just from the MEP trays. Uh, some obstacles or issues with this project in terms of lead or just construction in general. The, um, the water table is about one foot above the lowest elevation. So whenever it rains, it goes from this nice dry area in the beginning and then it turns into this pond if it rains. So that rained for about half hour and that's what we ended up with under under the basement. So it, it introduces uh, drainage issues and it also emphasizes the sustainable sites credits for rain, stormwater runoff and control. So it, it may, emphasizes that quality of lead, uh, lead points for this project. It also introduces safety hazards. So that much rain, we had to re-excavate this slope because it caused uh, like a cave-in in the landslide because of the groundwater coming out of the side of the hill. So the site selection and all that just plays in for lead credits or just construction in general. Uh, the next project is a Hawkeye Tennis Recreation Center for University of Iowa in Iowa City. Um, the project our construction started for this project December 1st of 2013 and substantial completion is expected to be August 8th of this year. So this is wrapping up, it's getting close to the end. We have about a month left for this project. Um, it's based on lead version three, just like the other one. It's going for 45 credits with a possible total points of 65. Um, its goal is lead silver again, so it's got some room for error, but it also leaves leaves you room for uh, changes. It doesn't make it as strict when you're going through construction because issues come up. The project budget is about just under $12 million and the building area square foot is about 87,000. And again, the site for the area is just over 560,000 because uh, we're adding a new parking lot and a new friend practice field outside as well as the turf building inside. This is a picture of a rendering of what it will be. This building over here is existing. This is the new field we are grading. And this is the new turf building that's going in. And then we have a link building also right here that's going in new. Important strategies and credits for this one are really focused on the energy and atmosphere uh, category more than any other, had 28 points in this category. And the main one of that is Energy and Atmosphere Credit 1, optimizing energy performance for 19 points. That's the most you can get. It's gonna have a 48% energy cost saving, which is extremely hard to get. And they have a significant strategy that I will explain later for that. They're also using the IEQ credits again, so 12 credits for 12 points. So a lot of work for not as many points, but not quite as technically difficult as the energy atmosphere credits. Um, they're also taking advantage of the regional priority credits and innovation and design for, in terms of materials and resources. So all those points are being applied to materials and resources, maybe except for one. So they're almost doubling the, the points you can get there just by uh, good, I guess, lead planning. So the main uh, reason this building is getting the 19 points for EA Credit 1 is the mechanical systems. So in the turf building, it's got an outside air unit for heating with a radiant floor system and high efficiency boilers. So this is a drawing of the turf field radiant floor system. So all of these are radiant floor pipes under, that are going to be underground in the turf building. It's almost the entire field filled with them. There's a pretty significant amount of pipe being laid. And then also the other huge strategy for this portion of the building is there's no cooling system in the summer. It's just all outside air ventilation being brought in. And this is the, the fan, bringing it all, exhaust fan circulating all the air. And when I'm standing by it, I'm about right here at the top of my head. So it's very, very big, very big system. I actually took that picture today out on the job site. 
And then the link building has outside air units also for heating and cooling. Um, it's good using variable refrigerant system with a geothermal ground loop. So the ground loop is right here under the parking lot and in the existing field. It's utilizing the geothermal and all the area they have up there to take advantage of energy from the ground. And then those systems are also tied in to the existing university systems for that area. And then lighting, they're using high efficiency T5 output fixtures in the turf building area and LED fixtures in the link building and the exterior parking lot area along with timing controls to minimize energy usage for electricity and lighting. Uh, some concerns for this project were the early coordination. Uh, I would say it was a lead wasn't as brought up in the beginning of the project as I feel like it should have been, so there's less of it in the specifications than would be preferred, and um, it was kind of just set back because of the harsh winter, so most of the energy was focused on getting the project started and getting the drawing, which is important, but it kind of leads to kind of a sacrifice at that point, so it's making this summer interesting in terms of getting the the documentation and everything we need to get together so we can submit it. Um, another example of that is the MR Credit 7, which is certified wood. Um, it wasn't really in the specs in the beginning, so we've run into issues with subs not complying with that, or at least it not being in their bid, so we're running into cost issues. So credit analysis has become very important for that project. Uh, in conclusion, um, of this summer, both these projects have shown the importance of initial design and planning, where as long if you have the specs and the initial design and with lead in mind, it makes the whole project easier for everybody involved. Um, I would say the Health Science Center for Blackhawk has a better approach in terms of looking at how implementing lead throughout the project and because we're seeing that already right now in the beginning rather than the Hawkeye project we're kind of scrambling at the end to get it all together and both of these buildings however they're expected to reach their goal so that is awesome um, they're both going about it in their own way the Blackhawk College is getting it by really getting the sustainable sites credits and taking advantage of the college campus and um, area regional credits and the Hawkeye Tennis is really emphasizing the mechanical systems and taking advantage again of the regional credits. And then also these projects have shown credit analysis for the value of lead in your project is important. So looking at what that actual credit or what that point will give you, how will it value your building rather than just getting a point. So spending money on getting a point might not be worth it in terms of uh, construction or real dollars in terms of just lead. So uh, lead credit analysis I've seen has become very important in terms of any lead project. And that's it. Thanks.